I was very very underconfident. I could not even speak properly and I used to hate putting on makeup and I used to go for auditions with my dad and my dad would say like he would literally pick me up from school I would change in the car and do whatever cheap makeup I could get I would do that and I'd like acne on my face and all that has come to me a lot we thought you were a a, a you know a nasty person we thought you are unapproachable we thought you are intimidating and uh, i'm very happy with those tags <laughs> i was a very good student and i i didn't even finish college so i'm like iske ilawa kuch ho nahi payega to ye karna padega aur acche se karna padega that decision of mine everybody question including my parents and uh, i just didn't want to listen to them so at that point I anyway wanted to become a housewife right so at that point if I wasn't getting any work I was okay with it I was very lost I was very confused because I wasn't understanding what has happened I I really wasn't I mean uh, I don't want to get too much into it but uh, I was I was blank I I I just kind of went numb then there was this one night when me my dad and my mom we got drunk <laughs> <laughs> and we spoke our hearts out it took us 5 years to speak about uh, you know that 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 uh, that period of my life and when we spoke there was anger there was tears there were tears there was happiness there was pain and everything came out as a woman you can be judged um shamed or just just questioned but what do you do when you have it you wing it and you wing it with a smile that's what my guest has been doing um uh, battling all the ups and downs in life and braving all of them with a wide smile on her face and i am so happy to present to you jennifer winget on the third season of her story only on bollywood bubble thank you jenny for doing this yeah i'm really so happy to be here too but you know jenny You started off as a child actor. When did you realize, like, when you're a kid, usually the parents who realize that okay, chalo. That's true. Yeah, that's true. I mean, look. So my mom was working in this company called Shogun Films, and they used to produce a lot of South movies. They also did produce Gardesh and oh. uh, 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 Kabhi na Kabhi na Kabhi. So um my mom had nothing to do with the film department she was just you know an admin head or something yeah. like that and she used to take us to work so summer vacations were going on she used to take us to work and then uh, you know one of my mom's colleague or somebody said we're making a film and uh, you know we need a lot of kids in that film there's going to be an elephant in the film and uh, so mom is like do you want to do it i'm like okay what what Like Chennai, my two months shoot here. There's an elephant, baby elephant, and you know summer vacations are going on. Do you want to do it? I'm like, yeah, okay. What was the so age? I was in the fifth standard then, so twelve, twelve, mm. and then I went and my mom went and my dad went. It was like two months of vacation, paid vacation, and uh, that's how it started. Then I took a little break for my education, and then when I was seventeen. is uh, so i did a film in between when i was 14 called kuch na kaho yeah. where oh god kuch na kaho life that one that one only it, na yeah, yeah 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 that one only uh and then at 17 i started television chakla ka boom boom yeah and i just kept doing it i wasn't thinking ki is this what i want to do or is this where i yeah. uh, you know uh, where i see myself I was just doing it because I was enjoying it because I was getting a lot of attention in school. True. All my friends were treating me very nicely. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, this this is fun. There was a point when I was doing three shows. I used to go from one set to the other to the other. Three days I did not go home. Every day, मतलब not every, every day, but oh every day would be like sixteen, seventeen hours. <gasps> And uh, there was this one time for three days I didn't go home because at seventeen, seventeen, eighteen, yeah. But did you ever face rejection in the early stages of your oh, career? Yeah. And I'm so glad I did cuz that's what made I was very very underconfident. I could not even speak properly and I used to hate putting on makeup and 
I used to go for auditions with my dad and my dad would say like he would literally pick me up from school I would change in the car and do whatever cheap makeup I could get I would do that and I had like acne on my face and all and uh, we would go for these auditions to Mehboob studio or wherever wherever you know and uh, I was like 15 16 something at that time you're anyway a little too sensitive yeah. to any criticism right so uh, my dad would tell me, hey, at least put little more makeup, little <laughs> more makeup, because you know, <laughs> I'm like, I can't, you know, I can't, I hate it. <laughs> but I think it's just that slowly, slowly, you know, you like I said, I you start when your heart is. My heart was not totally into it because I was not understanding what I'm doing. Once yeah. my heart was in it, when I understood what I'm doing, when I'm understood what I'm freaking getting out of it, you know. No other job can give you the satisfaction that an uh, actor's yeah. job can, you know. But at the same time, you know, you spoke about being sensitive to um, rejection at that point. Of course, at 15, 16, like, yeah. you know, I'll tell you something. So, you said you were an underconfident um, child. I also was super un underconfident. I was underconfident to face the cameras even like four years ago. I used to feel like people will say something mm. and it will bother me. And... Um, I used to get bullied a lot for the way I sp spoke and everything in school. So beyond a point, it stopped mattering. Yeah. Um. Was there a point where you realized that okay, this doesn't matter? And do you remember those days when it actually mattered? Like being a being a 15, 16 year old, not yeah. just a boy or a girl, but having acne and dealing with it, and then getting comments from people can be really, really. So physically, you know, honestly, these physical. Uh, judgments for me never really mattered to be very honest I yes I had a problem with my acne <laughs> it's so stupid <laughs> and I dealt with that okay but I I would tell you one incident when I was uh, uh, 14 or 15 or something like that 14 I think and uh, I got a call for um, for an ad right and what was the ad was stay free now I'm in school Okay, and I'm talking about a couple of years ago. No, not many years ago, a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm like, I don't want to do it. And mom's like, why don't you want to do it? I'm like, everybody will tease me at school, yeah? I mean, uh, you yeah. know how kids can get like, you know, we all yeah. know. We... So I'm like, I don't want to do a sanitary napkin ad because, you know, I, I don't want to be uh, made fun of in school and, you know, uh, my school <laughs> so and she's like you know Jen this is I mean you don't want to do it it's totally your call don't do it but I would really really want you to do it for you to get over that thing of what will people say and that is what my mother has taught me that is what my father has taught me that if you don't want to do something don't do but it has to be your call not because of what people will say yeah. you know as simple as i was sweeping the floor one day and i uh, you know jhadu karke i just put it like that and my dad comes and says you don't want to do it don't do it but if you're doing it do it properly so that is something that has stayed with me you know over the years so uh, well, there have been people who talk shit about me even now, but it really doesn't matter to me and it has never mattered to me. My only problem was when I was growing up that I was, I thought I was fat, okay? But now when I look back at it, look back at it I wasn't. <laughs> you were made to feel like that. I was made to because I was in that industry. I was, I was in television where everybody looked a certain way, you know, and I was young. I was like 15, 16. I was just kind of getting into my own you know so you have that baby fat that you know the yeah. brown face and all of that so i never tried to look like somebody else also i've just thought that i am different but i will not do something that is not naturally me you know when you brave everything to with a smile hmm. Often you're not taken seriously. Like people don't really. No, feel yeah, that people get very intimidated by me. But that I would have so come to. I, I was, I was very intimidated see. by you. By so the way, so it's the not like when I'm I didn't know a, you. I'm not a fool. Okay, I'm not a fool that you make fun of me and I say, oh, thank you. I'm not a freaking fool. So yeah, so you know, school, college time, I didn't have. I wasn't with my friends so much. I was on a set and working with people and learning these things. So that time I did not li live that life of a typical teenager, right? But it was after uh, when I was going through a, a certain phase in my life, that's when I realized that, oh my God, my these friends are like angels. Like literally they have 
my friends and my family they have removed me from a dark hole where i was like i don't even i don't need anyone i don't need you i don't need you i need you but they're like no dude you need us so they literally and that has made me realize how important it is to have a strong support system yeah. no matter how much money you have no matter whatever if this is solid your foundation is solid now you can tackle life head on and with a smile on, on your face it's not that difficult i True. if i can do it anybody can do it that was going to be my ending line and then pehle hi bol diya which is nice <laughs> um dreams and ambitions have uh, played a very big part right. in your career in your life and i'm not just talking about you know dreams and ambitions of being this um, super uh, popular heroine only yeah. i'm talking about dreams and ambitions in every part in every aspect of your life mm. were you always like this no <laughs> absolutely not i wanted to get married at 22 i wanted to have kids at 24 and i wanted to become a housewife what yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's also that's also an everyday. Yeah, I shouldn't a, even exactly, react like that. Yeah. It's an everyday, exactly. everyday job. I think my mother is the most hardworking person in the entire household. Oh, to be very mothers honest, mothers are amazing. Yeah, yeah. Because, and uh, she like homemakers it's, are the best. But how did it change then? It changed when I was doing kasoti zindagi ke. Till then, I don't know. I was like, ah, oh, you know, this is all fun and nice and this, but you know, I want to settle down and all. But I think it was somewhere during that time that I realized that, oh my God, you know, this is amazing, and I want more of it, and I want to live this life, see what I can do more, yeah. because obviously I can't do anything else because I gave up education. <laughs> and I was a good student. <laughs> I was a very good student, and I I didn't even finish college. So I'm like इसके अलावा कुछ हो नहीं पाएगा तो ये करना पड़ेगा और अच्छे से करना पड़ेगा क्योंकि बेटा अगर ये नहीं हुआ तो फिर क्या नो प्लान बी नो प्लान बी एंड आई डोंट नो इट वॉज ड्यूरिंग दैट टाइम दैट 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 यू नो दैट थॉट चेंज आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू जस्ट गेट मैरिड एंड बेबी सो सुन बट आई वॉन्ट टू वर्क सम मोर आई वॉन्ट टू मेक सम मोर मनी आई वॉन्ट टू ट्रेवल सम मोर एंड यू नो लिव दिस luxurious life and for me it was very important to do all of that on my own yeah i did not want to take my father's money or my mom's uh, you know because they've sacrificed so much for us right it was my time to give them and do something for them and so it just kind of gave me this sense of empowerment then that time i didn't even know what the word mean meant right so it gave me that sense of empowerment that you know i can give my mom beautiful sari or i can give my dad a watch and we can all go traveling together and it, it, it just that, that's what kept me going and i once i did this much then i wanted to do this much and then i went and still fucking got married yeah <laughs> i was going to ask you that let me i'll make it easy for you now but, but i was initially i was like acha dreams aspiration and ambition and then i'm like But you did, <laughs> yeah. So I, I had, I had a dream of getting married. Then I didn't have the dream. See, but you did. I wanted to first be an air hostess. Then oh. I wanted to get married. Then I wanted to live my life. Then I got married. Then I lived my life. Wow. कर तो मैंने सब कुछ लिया. But मुझे ये पूछना है कि then why, how, when did you decide to get married and why did you? People. I was in love. Yeah. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Again, I'm saying it is very normal. It is normal for teenagers to go through self doubt and this and that. It is very normal for people to fall in love. I fell in love, and I thought that woohoo! <laughs> you know, I made it. It's all on. It's all on track. Twenty four marriages. Twenty five marriages. Yes. Can't be done. Yeah, be done. Yeah, perfect. But you know, life happened, and life happened so amazingly that I'm like, "Tk, so now this has also happened, and this has not worked out. No problem. Let's move on to something else, True. and move on." I did. You know, when you're talking about living life, is there anything in life, looking back at the life that you've lived, um, if given a choice, you would have done differently? No, nope. not a single thing. Not a single damn thing, because. hindsight me when you look okay there are so many beautiful things i got out of bad relationships at that time you're like why me god why me why have you done this to me but then now when i look back at it actually when i got out of it is realized thank god 
and why not me because the lessons and i know it sounds very cliche but the lessons that you learn in your hardest times are yeah. the lessons that make you are the lessons that it's like you know i keep making fun of this i was talking to simone also this morning that time for me you know was i was like in my cocoon and i became this beautiful butterfly after that time and i love it i love it so i would not change a thing because if i'm just talking about uh my uh marriage right i got my little baby out of it i got my breezer you know i mean for him i would do like do it again like a thousand times over i would go through that so no regrets not changing a damn thing when somebody in your position decided to get married at that juncture yeah. in life everybody told me you man what are you doing no 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 exactly kitne logo ne bola ye sab ne bola sab ne bola but at that point even if god would have told me na don't do it i'm like no but i want to that's the thing if i have to do something if i want to do something i will do it and that's what i wanted to do and it felt right then and we had i mean i had some i have some lovely memories of it and that's what i choose to remember unfortunately i think both of us were not ready it's not just him or it's not just me i think both of us weren't ready to take that step we had been friends for so long yeah. you know and uh, and we used to i mean we used to like we were like a house on fire every time we met but i think i don't know it was an unfortunate timing i guess i want to ask you this that um hamari industry mein na labels lagana bahut easy ho jata hai so especially when a young actress who is like coming into her own yeah. and raising and rising the charts and suddenly decides to get married they are considered a little less um But, desirable unfortunately um which shouldn't be the case but it has happened with a lot of women especially not anymore it used to happen no it, it, when you I, I wasn't even five. thinking about that. No, you were not. But yeah. were you like were there noises around you? There were so many noises around me. There were so many voices, noises in my head also. <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> there were, there were like that decision of mine. Everybody questioned, including my parents, and uh, I just didn't want to listen to them. So at that point. I anyway wanted to become a housewife right so at that point if I wasn't getting any work I was okay with it and I didn't think I'm like you know I this is what feels right to me now and this is what I'm going to do because my heart is in it and when your heart is in something it's very difficult to listen to logic and reason and uh, you know when that decision was made uh when I made that decision a couple of years ago I honestly was I was so happy I didn't want to think about anything else ki what will happen to my career or this yeah. and that I was very happy I was very happy so external noises it didn't reach me only <laughs> But um when it didn't work out I I want to ask you this because um, I don't think many people ask that Ooh. um when something like this happens to anybody they the question is why yeah the why is the question yeah. I want to know how did you deal with it like um was it difficult for you were you of course. okay no of course it was difficult i'll be lying if i say i'm i'm human at the end of the day right no matter what tragedy happens in your life you you know there comes a point when you're like wow you know ouch so it was difficult at that point i thought i was i was very lost i was very lost i was very confused because i wasn't understanding what has happened i i really wasn't i mean uh, i don't want to get too much into it but uh, i was i was blank i i i just kind of went numb you know and i just gave myself those two years to to process what was going on and then once i processed it is when i'm like i mean it was literally as simple as this about 6 7 months i was like hey, whatever whatever and then one day i just woke up and i said that's it i'm done i'm done i don't deserve this this is you know this i don't want to be this person i hate this person and because of because of somebody else 
why that person doesn't own me i don't own that person things happen life it's okay this is not the end of it right yeah. i will not lose sleep over any human being no matter who it is i want because this for me is very important me is very important and it was as simple as that i woke up i'm like done i am done i'm done with being this and so i i this is how i deal with any any low uh, any lows in my life is i give myself time to to mourn to grieve to process and then one day i wake up and i'm like i'm done but those six seven days i'll be in my shell i'll be like you know not meeting anybody nothing nothing yet yeah, my friends being the nice people angels that they are they will always follow you know check up on me or come home or whatever whatever but that's all i need if you have so much love from so many people this one thing doesn't matter yeah. and you know today i think um, i always say this i don't know if you believe it i i believe it completely and uh, so i believe that uh, you don't find friends on an app you can still find partners on an app actually i haven't tried finding a partner on an app i really want to yeah, yeah, yeah. i want to see what it's all about <laughs> Chal, one day we'll do na. Come. I say, one day, people time will, will pass. People will anyway think that अरे ये तो किसी ने fake profile बनाया था हम लोग इतनी. We can have this one. We have our cover. Yeah. My God, we'll do that. That will be fun. But at the same time, you know, it is true. Um, everybody has a way of dealing with grief, and everybody yeah. has a way of dealing with personal loss. It, it was it was a personal loss to you at that point. Yeah. Did you cut yourself off from everybody? Yes. Yes, absolutely. That's exactly what I did because, like I said, because I was so lost and confused, I. I didn't know what to tell people or how to process that. Like I remember, my friends used to force me to go out. I'm like, I don't want to go out. So one day I went out and I'm like in a club kind of a place. Not a club really, but it was a restaurant which is like packed and you know. And the minute I and this was very fresh that time. And the minute I entered and every and you know a lot of friends and people from the industry were there. And they all look at me with those sad puppy ah, eyes, which is I I I I'm very thankful and respectful uh, for their wishes and blessings and all of that. But when I used to go out, I used to see people at looking at me with those sad, sympathetic eyes. Ki arey bichari yar. and it used to piss me off even more that's why i would not go out because yeah. i'm like i understand that i understand that you know you only have your feeling for me it's great but i don't need that right now right now i'm not ready to deal with you because i'm dealing with me so i that's why i cut off from people and um, yeah but then once i was done with it then i was then i'm so done with it no it is true it is true people who don't uh, gloat in self pity don't like others pitying them and that's exactly how um you're right because when you, when people around you even if they're friends if they get to know something bad has happened to you and if they know you really well yeah, then they'll not do that exactly they'll try to exactly. make you happy they'll no, try to they'll, change those things like your true friends know that this is not the time to talk yeah. about it when she's ready this is how my friends are with me when Same. she's ready she will come and tell us listen so my friend ruby right is so first so i know her since junior kg that's how close we are and uh So one time I call her and I say, "Listen, uh, so listen." She's like, "Tera, ye so listen, zena. Mere ko bahut dar lagta hai. Don't say so listen because every time you start a conversation like this, you have done something." Unfortunately, I was just talking to your friend also, Simon, and we were talking about all this. And um, I have seen few relationships not working out, and some where the guy has been my friend as well, but. it eventually is like a yeah, whatever yeah par- partnership kind of a problem um but the guys are often less judged and i'm not saying it because i'm doing the show I that's have, not true actually i've actually seen it in matlab maybe in my personal experience uh i can't say i mean yeah for a woman because we've been conditioned like that no once you get married no matter what the in law say or what the husband says you have to compromise and you have to adjust and this is what this is what our conditioning, conditioning. has been for a very very long time so i think that's why and you it'll take time to change society's thinking when it comes to matters like this because it's so difficult to Like so, you know, sometimes we get pissed with our parents. Ki, ab, arre, understand? No, I mean it's not that big a deal. But they will not understand that because all their life they've lived a certain way with a certain thought. For them to change now, or for us to expect them to change overnight, is ridiculous. Will you change? No. Will I change? No. 
uh, but we should. <laughs> yeah, that's my I'm mom saying. will so, be very happy hearing this from you. No, because we do get frustrated with our parents because I'm like you, you don't understand, you know, you don't understand this, that, da, 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 da. But you have to be a little patient with them, and you know, because they've been, they've done so much for Absolutely. you. Absolutely, you have to. So I don't, I don't know if men get judged more or women. Actually, they are right. They do. But क्या कर सकते हैं? That's how, that's the kind of society. I said in. women get judged. Women more. get judged more than men. Yeah, somewhere that is true. It is. If you can't change them, change yourself. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, how did your parents deal with that time? Oh, they were you... amazing. They were so amazing. I think you know that time everything happened so suddenly. Even they didn't know how to deal with it, right? So it was last year, no, 2020, when the lockdown happened, right? And my father is a man of few words, right? He doesn't speak too much, but so 2020, I, uh, we went to Goa. I have a house in Goa, so we, with the whole family, we were living in Goa for about two months. And there was this one night when me, my dad, and my mom, we got drunk, <laughs> <laughs> and we spoke our hearts out. It took us five years to speak about. Uh, you know that 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 uh, that period of my life and when we spoke there was anger there was tears there were tears there was happiness there was pain and everything came out so how they dealt with it i wouldn't know cuz i was dealing with myself i really don't know because i was like i just don't want anybody right now you know and they were so sweet they did not try to like kind of invade my uh, my privacy or whatever like my mom would check up on me and she would be like to call nahi karti hai main rukko yaar main nahi karti hu main aapko phone you know how we i still do that so i honestly don't know how they dealt with it because i was dealing with it but now that i spoke to them after 5 years they were they cool were parents. heartbroken yeah. Yeah, very heartbroken the, obviously but if they see their daughter happy i think that's that's what a parent yeah, wants exactly You are a romantic at heart, from what I can sense. I don't know if I'm. Really? Yeah, I I do feel that you, if you like somebody, you bear your heart and soul to that yeah. person, and that's that's possibly being. I'm not saying romanticizing yeah. like that, but yeah. romantic at heart, uh, purest. To be very honest, because I am one. I feel it can make you cynical if certain things in a friendship yeah. or a relationship doesn't work. You know, I'm. I will majorly talk about my friendships because if I feel like, मेरी मेरी को ना कोई अगर मेरा partner हो जो of course इतने मतलब I have not been in one so I wouldn't know how much pain. But I just feel that a partner betraying me won't hurt me so much as a friend betraying me would. And relationship in that way, I I is very important to me. Uh, it can make you cynical about matters of the heart, whether yeah. it comes to friendship or uh, yeah, relationship. Yeah, that's true. Have you ever faced yeah, that? Yeah, that's true. For a very long time, uh, I just like. you know when jennifer 2.0 happened <laughs> lovely i i just i was like you know what i'm going to have put blinders on and i want to just work 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 like how i was doing for such a long yeah. time and i got distracted and shit happened <laughs> you know i'm like put the blinders back on and just go da 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 and i did that i was i i kept myself so busy that i also didn't have time to think about it yeah i think that was also a way for me to kind of get over things is like don't give yourself time only to think about it just uh, you know nothing i didn't want anything to distract me from my work and that also helped me a lot so i did be, i i i won't call it cynical i needed those blinders back on because i'm like if i fall in love again it has to be with the right person i don't know what the definition of a right person is so don't ask me because i am not perfect no, myself we are finding one now we've discussed this <laughs> after <laughs> uh, so it it hasn't made me cynical it has just made me made me a little close to the idea no it has made me wiser let's just mm. say that like you wouldn't be making hasty decisions is I hope not, man. <laughs> well, now, now you have enough people to like stop you from doing that. I really hope not, because you know, at the end of the day, like you said, I am still a romantic. Yeah. I love love. I do. Yeah. I really do. I love being in love. Yeah. When was the last time you were in love? Just Simon's. <laughs> Simon's reaction has come. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love it. It was the last time I was in love was a couple of years ago. Okay. And um I want to know what kind of a person are you in love? Currently oh, if I ask. Oh, I'm you such a like you described it correctly. If I'm in love, I will give my everything to that person, heart, soul, everything, my jayda, jayda, everything, sab kuch. We spoke about love, we spoke about um your relationships, but one thing yeah, that Yeah, let's move on yeah, from love and relationships, exactly. yeah. That that Just has a part stayed of life. on is how you are as a performer. Hmm. And on TV, hmm. you have tasted like success which nobody else has ever seen like it, it is that's not that's that's no, pushing no. it a little bit but but, yeah. but 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 you've seen which few people have seen chalo huh. very few okay it's a rarity did you ever feel like ek point ke baad hota hai na ki matlab ek hi cheez karte karte you get like a little yeah uh, you you feel like bored also yeah. you feel like it's a Stagnant. task to just go and do it again it's not a task anymore that's the that's the yeah. problem i love a good task but when it stops being a task is when i'm like okay i'm done from here and that's what happened after behad one uh when it go i mean that was like a turning point in my career right because being on television i had only played till at uh, till that point only like these goody two shoes characters yeah. the bahu the beti the you know the whatever comes with it and i was okay with it but then when behad was offered to me and they narrated the the story to me and they told me she dies in the end i'm like wow that is what made me do the show that she dies in the end because till then in my head i was also i was thinking that you know they it sounds like a nice show this and that and i want to do it but you know tv par if you play uh, uh, an antagonist you know wo vamp Huh. Fan bana denge aapko, you know. It's that's because that's what I have also grown up on. That is what I have also seen all my life. Okay, ki agar aapka ab villain ek to hero hai, hero hai na villain hai. ठीक है इसके अलावा कुछ नहीं है जज्जा. तो तुमने बोला चलो if it does not do well at least I'll die. Okay, and plus the show sounds great and all of that. वो तब तो था ही. Okay, so I did that show and that was 2016 and that's when I fell in love with acting. That is sure. what I was talking about because when I played that character, I swear I did not know that I was capable of 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 playing a character like this because there was just so many layers to it, to the character. There was just I I have enjoyed every moment of working on that set, not because of my co-actors or the unit. I mean, of course, all of that is there, but. just the joy of going back to work and being that character you know i they used to give me holidays i said mereko chutti nahi chahiye mereko please kaam karao because i nice. wanted to go to work i wanted to do those scenes i wanted to say those dialogues i wanted to emote those emotions and that's when i'm like this is the biggest high and joy an actor can get and then when it is received so Amazingly, was, oh my God, amazingly, people are crazy. that just kind of gave me a validation and encouragement, and motivated me to do not just those kind of roles, but different kinds of roles. Because I made that shift from, or I get got lucky that I got offered that I made that shift from playing the good girl to a grey girl. I did that. I did this well. I did this well. Now what happened after this is I got kind of kept getting the same kind of. Grey characters, and I'm like, but I don't have anything more to give to this yeah. grey character because I've already. The given industry tries career. to box you. I don't care. I if I see myself on TV and I'm like, you know, this is when uh, this like suppose I'm playing Monica, okay, in Codem. I see even if I see a similarity of Maya in Monica, na that pisses me off because as a, if I'm watching it as an audience, I'm like, hey, she's doing the same thing that she did in that show. Mm. I I don't like that. I do not like that, and I I that's why I don't do a lot of work because the kind of work that you know gets offered to me, unfortunately, is kind of the same kind of work that I've been doing, and uh, I, I I want to I want to keep reinventing. I want to keep. challenging myself i want to do different kinds of roles and work so that i also learn i yeah. don't know if i'll be good at it or not but i am okay to fail you know why i respect you i i will not name but there are actors who have 
transitioned who started off on tv got like extreme mileage yeah. from tv and the space and you know and then they moved on to doing films or whatever and they completely disregard the tv tag like kuch kuch time hota hai ki ha tv tag like that. you know yeah. i'm telling you why yeah. i'm asking you this is because i know you are very proud of I your am. roots i definitely am there are producers and casting people who feel that they don't want to cast tv actors that that is a thing of course. but not many people know that there are also actors who don't like being called tv actors despite gaining immense it's popularity it's kind of a wish it's kind of a action reaction yeah. you know what i mean so there is not you can't blame one side it is happening on both sides okay you are kicking me so i will also kick back no yeah i why will i take it so they must have you know whoever you're talking about they must have gone through certain experiences or in their life where they were rejected because they're from tv and it has happened to all of us you all also. of us it has happened it's not a big thing it has happened to all of us i don't want to get into the detail of it but it's okay that's when you say fine you can i and this is not you don't have to explain this to somebody else or you know this is this is the con- a conversation that you have with yourself and you say that fine they think that i am only capable of this much i will do because i'm an actor i will mold in any way that you give me okay doesn't matter tv ott film ye wo uh if you think i'm tv or i can only do this much i will change your mind not by not by fighting with you but by my Performing. actions absolutely you know? and that is what i have always believed in that there is no need to explain yourself to anybody let your actions let your work show and um, just just show who you are and honestly till date okay no matter who i meet be it from films or tv or older younger whatever i am so blessed that whoever i go to they all say one thing that you know we like the show and i'm talking about big people they're like you know my mother watched your show and my auntie yeah. watches your show and you've done such a good job and i like your career how you you know taken your career and this and i'm like to kaam ho na fir cast me then <laughs> but you know coming back you're an actor like you said that you want to keep your personal life personal and private sometimes there's intrusion in terms yeah. of news reports and sometimes they can get nasty sometimes um, even if your fans are not nasty to you but uh, reporters can yeah. be a little um mm, chala yeah and they can make those reports and there are constant reports of you know link up with everybody i listen link i have been linked up with every co-actor of mine you do one more interview with me you'll get linked up with me okay so <laughs> mm. let's spread it <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's a fact that it, it is bo- a fact. does it does it irritate you it used to because then you know what happened it used to when i was doing television right so what happens is when you get linked to an actor and then there are these fan groups and all and they start fighting Okay, and I was doing this show called DMZ, which was a youth show, and there the fight should be like I'm like, oh my god! Like, so what happens is because then there are these fan groups of one actor, second actor, third actor, then they have a fight, and then they start sending you messages, and then they start sending the creators messages, and this and that. So sometimes, with some actors, they take it personally, and that spoils the the environment on the set, right? And till i i used to get affected by that because i i i was young also you know i'm like mm, they talk this shit about me but then over a period of time uh it changed and they only said nice things about me but kabhi aise phatke diye matlab aise na verbally to you dmg ke time ye sab bahut hota tha no no uh, you have given it back to no, any no, of the reporters no. when they have like to the reporters like, when they tried to be a little so no i mean this is I mean, not really. They've not been that bad to me. Or yeah, anything. they have not been nasty. Yeah, to be very they honest, they have been. They have been. So, no, I think there was this one funny incident where I was, I think, uh, the press con of Behar two, and this reporter asked me that, uh, you know, आप ये ऐसे ये psycho वाला character play कर रही है, ना पूरा time बारा घंटा ऐसा है, ना तो आप घर में जाकर भी कभी ऐसे ऐसा मैं सच में पागल नहीं <laughs> and i don't know i mean that that timing i know it doesn't sound that funny right now but at that time the timing was so good when i saw the video again 
भाई माफ करना इफ आई डेंट मीन टू मेक फन ऑफ यू बट इट वॉज सो थिंग्स लाइक दैट या दे इफ दे ट्राई टू आस्क मी ऑल्सो समथिंग स्नीकीली ना आई हैव अ वे ऑफ स्माइलिंग and putting it putting them back in their place so i yeah. I, i think i've mastered that art but finally do you feel that um you know this was off camera but i will ask you if you're comfortable oh shit ah uh, the thing is that off camera when we were talking when we were talking about our first impression and you know what people uh, must have thought about you you kept telling me that did they say did, was oh, i perceived oh you as, were writing you were taking notes <laughs> was i perceived as something else and you know like whenever there's a strong opinionated person man or woman they are considered a bitch unfortunately yeah and uh, that has come to me a lot huh that has come to me a lot we thought you were a, a a you know a nasty person we thought you are unapproachable we thought you are intimidating and uh, i'm very happy with those tags but because i don't want i'm not a fool Okay just because I'm smiling and talking to you nicely doesn't mean that you know you can say whatever you want so uh I think as a person a whole person you can't be all good yeah. and you can't be all bad and uh me being a gemini I have extremes of both but one thing again my father taught me that do not wash your uh what is that do dirty not wash your dirty linen in public okay and especially me being in this industry where everything is under scrutiny at all points i have kept that side to myself and to my lovely friends uh and my family and this side is different this side is different and i don't want the two to 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 meet i'm very clear about that i have to tell you that this is our first conversation um and I didn't feel an iota of that. I'm so uh, thank you. Intimidating and everything because from the moment you entered and people should know this that we are genuinely like meeting for the first time. Yeah. We spoken only once and now the kind of warmth um and positivity that you exuded oh. is amazing. I mm. am not saying it to flatter you but it's genuinely Ah, uh, come here, give me a hug. Come here. Oh. I thank genuinely you. feel that me, I have me too. made a good friend today. Yes. And uh, I just hope that nothing in life uh makes you question yourself or change yourself hope, in yeah, any way i know because you are beautiful inside out and the way you are it was just i love the flow of the conversation Thank i you. love the fact and uh, you guys must know this i'm like you know i don't want to talk about the same thing over and over and over again and he made sure that we didn't i love the flow of this interview i love that we had good laughs and fun yes. and that's how it should be and uh, we are definitely finding you up <laughs> and we're definitely finding a suitable me. boy a suitable boy partner you're finding two. us a suitable Done. partner <laughs> Done. Done. and um, i always say this at the end of my show that um, now that you know what um, she has done and what she continues to do if she can you can too all right i love that wing it like wing it exactly <laughs> hello this is jennifer wing it and you're watching me on bollywood bubble